Welcome to the Christy Taylor Show. I am kicking off Black Music Month with a roster of amazing music influencers, filmmakers who are about that music life and so much more. And I had to kick off this month with fam. So I want you all to help me welcome to the Christy Taylor Show, Darius West. He's an editor and director known for Mic Drop, the culture of Christian hip hop, Wealth and in the Cage. Now, Mike Drop, the dictatorial debut for Darius West in association with Black Lava Films and his own company, Ergon Entertainment LLC, delivers a groundbreaking documentary film and that speaks to the culture, voice, and history of Christian hip hop. Now, he's going to have in this film appearances from artists like Chris Cooper of SFC, Stephen Wiley, Dynamic Twins, Gospel Gangsta. Fred Lynch of PID, Petter D, and Michael Pence, or Michael Peace. Now, also, in this film, he'll have music executives like Jimmy Kempner from Frontline Records and Joseph Taylor of Broken Records. Now, Wes has tapped into the heart of the grassroots movement that began in the early 1980s and still continues to thrive today. Welcome to the Christy Taylor Show, my fam. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> What's now, up, we sister? go way back. So, of course, I'm trying to squeeze in this bio, but we're family. Like, yeah. legitly, you and my brother are pretty much family. Yes, so, yes. through that connection, you're family. So, let's go up, take it back to the 1980s and how we connected. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I know, that's a long, <laughs> long time ago. Seems like yesterday, but still seems so far away. Uh, just you know, our um, our connection is your brother, of course, Michael Anthony Taylor, who's actually flying into LA tonight, and I'm meeting him oh. tomorrow. So we, you know, we're still working on some things, preparing for the some uh, uh, the event that's coming up. But yeah, uh, Michael Anthony Taylor is the glue, you know, the connector for a lot of us, especially myself and you and Christy. Uh, and I have yet to get to Memphis. To uh, hang out with y'all, you know, with you and everybody in the family, but yeah, that that connection, as we know, is is uh, is eternal, and it's you know, it seems like eternal since it's been the '80s, but yeah, we're yeah. family for sure. It's been a lifetime. Now, the connection that you all make really is the beginning of this journey that you're on right now with this film, Mike Drop. Uh, so let's talk about your own creative process, or I should say, your own um, creative origin. That made you and Michael intersect. Yeah, uh, me and Michael, we man, we met in the '80s, of course, uh, in, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He was a part of a group at the time that was called JC JC Crew. Uh, it ended up being ETW, and we all went to the same church, you know, Higher Dimensions Evangelical Center at the time. And uh, you know, myself, Michael Taylor, my brother Manuelo, you know, Darian Lewis, we all hung out together. Uh, you know, then just, you know, as, as life continued to, to go on, you know, he, he became my big brother, you know, and hung out with, with him a lot. We did a lot of work together. Uh, you know, we I even had a Christian rap group back at, back in that late 80s, early 90s called DMT. And Mike was producing a lot of our tracks, you know, number one. And, you know, that's one of the famous, we, you know, a few tracks. And he worked with Carmen. Then, of course, I began to work with Carmen as well. And uh, we toured together with Carmen, myself and Mike. And just a a long uh, a, a long relationship a long a relationship over a long span of time that you know now we can look back over our life and the influences we had at that time and mm -hmm. the people that we were around you know the pids the dynamic twins we could reach back out to them and say hey we're going to do this documentary and that's really how you know came mike hit me up say hey man let's do this i'm like and i was just out of i was fresh out of film school i said yeah let's do it <laughs> <laughs> let's do it let's do yeah. it Yes. Now, Darius, now the foundation of all of this really is your love for music. Yes. Um, as a young man, preteen even, mm -hmm. you were deep in the music game. As you say, you've had groups, you toured. Uh, can we talk about your early leanings um, that led to the music and the dance that has yeah. been your career? Yeah, uh, man, it spans back to... Basically moving to Tulsa, Oklahoma. I uh, was uh, in the ninth grade at the time, from originally from Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, and my mom had this vision to go to Oral Roberts University. You know, none of us knew what Oklahoma was or Tulsa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and so you, you you take these these two boys from the hood and put them in the the South Tulsa area. You know, pr- uh, really good culture shock. But it was during that time that I was listening to an artist named Carmen, and I used to tell Manuelo, my brother, you know, older brother. I said, I'm going to know this guy one day. He's like, man, you crazy. You know, we in Charlotte. You know, this, who's this white dude? This dude talking about he's going to know one day. You know, long story short, we, we make our way to Tulsa. We end up going to Higher Dimensions. And, of course, Carmen is attending Higher Dimensions. You know, who knew? You know, and <laughs> 16 years old, you know, I'm dancing on the stage with, with uh, uh, Morris Jackson. That's what we had a Christian, a Christian rap group then. And that's when Carmen discovered me. He said, man, I, I love your talent. and I love your your passion, your gift. So at 16, I started uh, working with Carmen uh, more uh, more behind closed doors in terms of like he wanted to know how to dance. He was like 40, around 38, 39, 40 around this time. And uh, so I was teaching him. Me and Morris started teaching him, you know, the the, the running man. You know, we called the MC Hammer, you know, the Cabbage Pasture, Roger Rabbit, all the all the, the dances we know from the early 90s, uh, late 80s. That's what we were teaching Carmen at, uh, at that time. So that, you know, really uh, was the the turning point that led me into what we now know as the Christian music industry. Now, let's talk about that transition because now Carmen, who just recently passed, which is a change of an era for many of us who grew up in Christian music, we had Andre Crouch and the Hawkins, Mm. you had Imperials, you had Striper. Um, (laughs) You had, you know, I'm not taking it back. (laughs) Oh my God, yes. Uh, you, you, I mean, Russ Taft that came out of the Imperial. I mean, Brian Duncan, all these different groups. The Garmo and Key. Oh my God, yes. Yeah. And at the time, Carmen and Amy Grant were some of the biggest Christian pop stars. We'll yes. call them that. But Carmen really preceded a lot of that because he was um, packing out stadiums. He pretty much created a um, a way of doing Christian promotion that no one ever had done other than the tent revival, so to speak. Yes. Uh, can you talk about what was happening as you enter the gospel music industry at that time? Yeah, it, it was, uh, you know, like, like you just mentioned, Carmen was a trailblazer. He, he did things that nobody else was doing. He was the first artist uh, to bring dancers on the stage and do this big major production that you know a lot of times would cost anywhere between five hundred thousand to a million dollars a night just to make this thing happen uh and so everything he did was based on faith you know uh there was no tickets sold to these event people came and you know we depended on the love offering from you know the people who came a lot of people you know for me that was the the big change for me i said well, i would say the change but the impact for me with working with carmen and being on tour with him as a dancer was seeing how many people's souls would change, man. Just seeing young people, you know, just generations of people, black, white, Hispanic, no, didn't matter, just coming to the altar and, and experiencing yeah. that. Because I, 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 you know, travel with other artists after that, but nothing was like traveling with Carmen. Because I didn't see the souls get saved like I saw with Carmen. I didn't see the 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 tenacity for you know, you know, the heart for you know, the heart for people like I saw with Carmen. So he had that, and I, I. I, you know, I grasped onto that, you know, because, you know, you, like I said, he, we did stadiums, we did the big arenas, you know, we did the Texas stadium, you know, even to this day is the largest Christian uh, concert in history. Yes, yes. And, <laughs> and, and being, yeah, and being on that stage, that's where, that's when I caught vision for my life. Being in the midst of mm-hmm. Carmen's vision gave me, a, a, gave me a, 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 a clear indication of where I was going in terms of my vision. So, I started touring with Carmen when I was 18 and 19. I knew what God had called me to do, but I had to be in that environment for God to open my eyes to see. And so I I, I, I pay a lot of honor to Carmen because without him, I would have received the vision that I have at that young age just by being in that, in that environment with him. You know, he was pretty much at a time um, where there was a, a, a great integration of music and uh, this is also during the time where we're seeing the birth of rap and hip hop. Yes. yes. Period. But then there is that element of wanting to bring faith and positive messaging and the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he, along with others, began this journey that you end up chronicling in your movie. So yes. now let's rewind to the birth of hip hop because. You, your mom has come to Oral Roberts University. She's taking her two sons who know how to dance. You're all teaching a, a, a pop star, a Christian pop star, how to dance and go yeah. on the road. 
But at the same time, hip hop is being born. Let's talk about that and that influence on your life as well. Yes. Uh, the first time I heard any Christian rap was Stephen Wiley. You know, we moved to Tulsa in 88. So it had to be around uh, 88, 89. And I would go back to Charlotte for maybe a couple of years, you know, summer camp that we used to go to a, a church of God. And I would bring back these instrumentals of, you know, Stephen Wiley songs, you know, and I put my own raps to it, uh, you know, walking on water and just, you know, just me, you know, because I saw, you know, you know, I'm I, by a few times, I'm 15, 16 years old, 14, 15, yeah. really just going back and using this tool that I saw as Christian rap as an opportunity. Let me minister to these uh, young people. And, you know, uh, I remember a uh, uh, spiritual mother of mine, you know, Sister Laura Butler, you know, uh, the Butlers, they've been uh, instrumental yes. in, in our growth in Tulsa. And uh, my first trip on the on, on a plane, other than flying to Tulsa at one time, was with uh, Sister Laura Butler. And she took me down to Midland, Texas. I, I'll never forget <laughs> this. I think I was like 15 years old. And she said, you know, this won't be the first, this won't be the, this only the first time you're going to be traveling like this. And, mm -hmm. and, and, I just went with her because I was just into Christian rap. So, you know, and I had the opportunity then, you know, I was in high school and like every other weekend I was on in on, on a plane with, uh, you know, Walter Jones, Brother Jones, we call him, Brother Jones. And I was flying around the nation with him just as a Christian rapper. I didn't, there was no group then. It was just, it was just Darius at 15, 16 years old, just doing this thing, you know, because I, I felt and I knew even at that young age that God wanted me to impact my generation. You know, and this was a tool that, you know, that had then, you know, long story short, I, you know, I, I met Morris Jackson. We started the a Christian rap crew, group called Destiny Manifesting in Time. Then, you know, we met Carmen, and, you know, the rest is history. So I, I knew at a young age that God was going to use me in that area because I grew up in Charlotte as, you know, as a considered church boy. Uh, and I would always be singing, you know, leading songs. I sing uh, Sandy Patty songs, you know, every Christmas, every Easter you know, what is a morning like this? You know, those <laughs> I did high soprano, high, high out a tenor voice, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I was always in front, I was always in front, you know, uh ministering in some some uh fashion of, of music or a performance. So uh, just God was God was preparing me then for what we see today. You know, I, I'm loving this story because you, unlike a lot of people, because you at your age you're in, is that there was already a a presence of gospel rap or Christian rap that was happening. Um, so when you talk about Stephen Wiley, who many of us consider like the father of Christian rap. Yes. What were some of the things once you came to Tulsa and began to meet those um, particular artists with some of their stories about taking the gospel of Jesus Christ through this particular medium? Yeah. Uh, just seeing uh, firsthand the, the struggle uh, you know, the 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 lack of a, of a acceptance, mainly in the black segment of, of the church, uh, the white segment of the church was more acceptive, but they wasn't really uh, uh, they didn't want the culture. They didn't want the, you know, they just wanted the music or the entertainment portion, you know, and the ministry. Portion, but they didn't want you as, as an individual, uh, you know, to start dating the daughters and all that kind of stuff. So some of the things that they, they mentioned. <laughs> so uh, but uh, yeah, so, you know. You know, firsthand, you know, ETW, End Time Warriors, you know, Johnny Williams, Mike Hill, rest in peace, he's in heaven as well, and uh, uh, Elroy, you know, I saw them firsthand, you know, they, they approached me quite a few times, you know, hey, man, help, we want to do it, and I was like, man, I'm going to tour Carmen, or I'm already, you know, so we, <laughs> we but this has been an opportunity to to bring them in, even on the back end, and, and make them a part of this project as well, but seeing uh, what a lot of these guys went through, you know, the doors been shut in their faces and having to raise their own money and ask for uh, offering to get from one city to the to next, to another. you know, just to get gas money, you know, just eating right. McDonald's or Taco Bell, or whatever, or Taco Bueno, just to, you know, make ends meet, you know, just because the, their heart, it wasn't about a, a record deal. It wasn't about right. making money or becoming famous. It was about the kids, you know, there was, right. in, you know, Stephen Wiley and, in ETW and these groups like this, DOC that came to Tulsa later, yes. they were on the north side of Tulsa, man. They was in the Greenwood area. They were ministering to these yes. kids in the, in 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 in, uh, in these uh, you know neighborhoods that were less fortunate, because that's what they were called to do. 
and that's yeah. that's what Christian rap was born birthed out of. It wasn't birthed out of let's start this so it can be an industry or be a genre. Let's do this because we love hip hop and we know right. hip hop is a tool to reach young people. So why not use it for God? And so seeing that firsthand uh, made made it such a special uh, uh, thing for myself and Mike Taylor to say, let's take what we saw then and bring it to the screen now. And that's what Mike Drop is all about. You know, I really like this uh, storyline because, you know, we, we don't have enough time to really go layer by layer, which is what the point yeah. of the is. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to kind of really underscore your love of music, your love of God, um, your love of ministry, having been, as you said, on the stages with, you know, Carmen, who was early on. You, you've toured with other um, major gospel artists. But the very fact that you felt a need once you move into film, because you've danced, you've sang, yeah. <laughs> you've rapped, um, and now moving into film, what made you and my brother Michael decide that this particular subject was important to document? Because hip hop is global now. I mean, yes. because from from then, you know, to now, um, why Christian hip hop being chronicled through a documentary? What was the what was your why? Yeah, I'll say this. Uh, Mike has always been like 10 years ahead of everybody in the church uh, because he he is he is not looking through the eyes of a church or, or ministry. He's looking through the eyes of what the in, what's happening in the industry. So approaching me even at the uh, end of 2014 uh, and we step into 2015 uh, documentaries wasn't like famous or popular like they are now you know netflix it wasn't what it is now yes, right? you know, instagram nothing <laughs> social media what's that <laughs> it wasn't but I but mean, mike i will yeah. say that our nerdiness and his nerdiness because my him being my brother he yeah. always love the jfk documentaries he mm -hmm. liked all the michael moore <laughs> documentaries yeah yep yeah, yeah. he would go to the library so i was okay this is good this is good to know um the inner the inner workings of you two's minds yeah <laughs> you know Cause you know, cause we we've always worked well together. I uh, always been, you know, Mike is super genius to me. Uh, music creative, but he 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 knew that he knew that for film he didn't he didn't know what film what it took to do film. And I worked in the film industry, you know, been in uh, at the time, been in L.A. for like three or four years, and I know he knew music. So what better way to do this if you get someone who's a filmmaker, someone who's been in the music industry for so long, and let's make this work together. And that's really what, what came about it. Like you said, Mike is a documentary head. He loves documentaries. At the time, I wasn't. I was like, okay. But then by doing it and throughout the creative process, I'm like, oh, my God. You know, the power of story uh, storytelling in this medium is now not only just popular, but it's actually needed. And a lot of people are being yes, educated through yes. it. Yeah. So what was important to you as you being the documentarian or the storyteller or the filmmaker and this being your first film that you directed, what was the story you needed to tell for Mic Drop? Yeah, the story that we really wanted to tell, I think it was a twofold. One is to honor these pioneers, honor the ones that came before because you know, like we we teach, I, we teach our children like, look, in, in order for you to know where you're going, you have to know where you've been, and you need to know the history of your your culture, your family, just in general. And I believe a lot of that is is uh, rooted in what Christian hip hop is all about, because you know, today a lot of these artists, you know, a great majority of them have no clue. They have no clue who Michael PC is. They have no clue who Mike uh, Stephen Wiley is. Dynamic Twins, you know, SFC, PID, and and in the mm -hmm. mainstream uh, hip hop, you know, they know about the DMXs. They know about you know the Curtis yeah. Blows. They know about you know uh, African yeah. body. They know about that because it's been it's yeah. it's, it's there, and, and these guys are being honored. But there's really no consistent honoring or giving flowers to these guys while they're still yes. alive, you know, to right. show honor. So that, that was one thing that we want to make sure was in the forefront of this, but also the message that it was never about money. It was all about the call ministry, and everyone's yeah. call to ministry to do this because mm -hmm. it wasn't about them. It was about the young people that they wanted to reach. That is so interesting because a lot of people don't know that, in the early ages of the Christian music industry, we'll call it industry, yes. it 
really was about, you know, I could go get an R&B deal or I could go get a rock deal. Or I could go get a hip hop deal. But they were like, no, I'm going to serve the Lord. And oftentimes it was very well connected with a church or a ministry. Yes. How has it changed now that gospel music and me having had a career in gospel radio, um, how was it for those who were in the Christian music, particularly hip hop, when it became business? How did mm. they handle that? <laughs> I think a lot of that was stemmed to the success, the success of DC Talk. Um, you know, uh, they were, uh, you know, you, you had your FFCs, you had your PIDs, you had your E Rocks, you have all these other artists, you know, uh, D Boy, Rodriguez, rest of, uh, so. Uh, you had all these artists that were doing what they did, but I think a lot of that impinged upon the success of DC Talk because that's what that's when I feel that it became more of a corporate situation because the 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 uh, the time that DC Talk went from being Christian rap to Christian alternative rock, there was a uh, a a big drop in the focus and the highlight of Christian mm -hmm. hip hop. And so it, it, a lot of these guys, you know, uh, you know, they couldn't tour no more. You know, wow. you know, the you know, the, the funds wasn't there to continue. Mm -hmm. So they, you know, had to go get regular jobs and, you know, some, you know, started families and begin to do other things. But yeah. a lot of a lot of that, mm. a lot of the attention of Christian rap was focused on DC Talk at the time. So mm -hmm. the moment DC Talk changed genres, it was like, OK, wow. we don't need that no more. We'll follow, you know, follow this trend. And of course, later in the 2000s, you had a group called Cross Movement that kind of pick up the torch in a sense and, you know, kind of right. moved on from there. And at this time, it was, it was already corporate. It was already about the uh, the money making business in the sense. And I understand that because it's, it's you know, music industry, you got to make money. It's about the publishing and all, and all that kind of stuff. But I think that the, the spirit that that mm -hmm. that uh, was lost in a lot of the what the pioneers built and were the foundation has been built is the forefront of ministry and knowing the word of God and presenting that through your lyrics and, and not just the lyrics, but also your life, you know? Yeah. Wow. That's a mouth. I mean, that's a mouthful. Now speaking about um, DC talk and your history in the industry, you have even worked, Michael worked, Michael, my brother, Michael Anthony Taylor, he worked with DC talk. Yep. You also were Carmen, I mean, uh, Kirk, Franklin, who yes. also worked with DC Talk. So when they shifted, and I think you actually have in the film one of the uh, one of the representatives from DC Talk. What did they? How did they feel when that impacted gospel hip hop or Christian hip hop in a way that kind of caused it to take a back seat? Because by this time, hip hop globally. I mean, you got K-pop, yeah. you got you know all that kind of stuff. But Christian hip hop is now falling off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, to clarify, we don't have anyone from DC Talk, but we do have one of the dancers that danced with DC Talk okay, in the documentary. The know the person who, who actually uh, started as a dancer with DC Talk and, and began uh, okay. his career in, in Christian rap as well. But he talked okay. about meeting because there's, you know, in in the in the film, uh, Soup the Chemist from the SFC, he defines what the difference is between Christian rap and Christian hip hop, the difference between rap and hip hop. He says, wow. what we did was hip hop and what they did was rap because because rap became more commercial, but hip hop, even today, is still, still underground, yeah. still true. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's, it's still, you can feel the difference. So No Diverse even talks, even talks about that, how when they had the opportunity yes. to go see DC talk at a concert, he's like, well, he listened to their music, like, well, this is not really rap rap this is kind of like pop you know what i'm saying so be, <laughs> felt, you know but then he went and, and of course uh you know he'll, he'll talk more about it in the in the film but his his opportunity to to uh work with them but it, that's what it felt like it felt like mm -hmm. this is hip-hop over here but this is rap so we're going to focus on rap because we feel like this was brings in more money as opposed right. to what this is, because you guys are not smiling on your record, like uh, a record album cover, you know what I'm saying? You're scaring the white folks, you know, you can't be, you need to smile, yeah, you know? Yeah, right. You know what? <laughs> and no, it really I, is the story of hip hop yeah. in rap, yeah. in period. So, where is hip hop and where is Christian gospel hip hop today in what, 2021? In 2021, uh, there's been quite a bit of progression in terms of pr production wise uh you know type of artists uh lyrics you know just uh in general and 
right now, you know, you, a lot of people know Andy, Andy Minio. They know the Cray. Of course, they have a song called, uh, you know, Coming In Hot. You know, that's a, a real popular song right now. And it's crossed over. And so Christian hip hop is is just now catching up to what, you know, uh, hip hop is today. And mm -hmm. a, a, lot, a lot of people believe it, and even in the Christian music industry, that they feel like at some point it's going to merge to where you won't have Christian hip hop. It's just all be called hip hop, you know, mm -hmm. and, and everybody just, you know, presenting their message, you know, however they yes. present it. And so it won't yeah. be like, okay, this is Christian hip hop, this is hip hop, you know, because you had, you know, groups back in the day, Public Enemy and the EPMD or yeah. KS1. KS1 was like, you know, a five percenter, but yeah. you didn't call it this five percenter rap. You know, this is Muslim right. rap, but this is, you know what I'm saying? So right. it's kind of like, yeah, you know, and so a lot of people believe, you know, even in the documentary, they mentioned that, you know, they believe at some point it's going to be called hip hop. It's not even going to call Christian hip hop, but it, I think Christian hip hop had to get to a point to where the respect, I mean, I think, you know, we, we pay a lot of uh, pay a lot of honor to uh, Kanye West, man. You know, when he came out with yes. Jesus King, it put a big spotlight mm -hmm. on Christian hip hop. Because a lot of people didn't I'm, even know what I'm it was. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm yeah. so glad you brought that up because I, I remember when Kanye came out with his song, I was floored like I because I do know the journey of uh, gospel rap, yeah, gospel hip hop, Mr. Dale, Holy Hip Hop, you know, mm. Apostle, and yeah. and like how when that song came out, I I I could feel. I don't know if you know R.J. Groove. He's always promoted you know, on our radio station locally and in Atlanta, um, a lot of the underground. Yeah. And they felt like, I think there was a, it was a love and a hate situation that Kanye got a chance to say, Jesus walks. Jesus and, walks. And, and he was like, why did he, why was he able to do it? And, you know, and the pushback had been for traditional gospel rappers, but at the same token, for those who looked at it as like, this is the door. Let's run through it. Lecrae being one of those yes. um, and others. So uh, it, it's been a very interesting time. And the very fact that you're saying that there's a there's coming a point where like we're common conscious rap, you know, yes. everybody just saying it's just hip hop. Either you're a great storyteller or you're not. So, yeah, yeah it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So what are some of the things that you have going on in support of Mic Drop <laughs> <laughs> that we could talk about? Well, uh, the thing that we're focused on and excited about is the, the world premiere in Dallas at the Granada mm -hmm. Theater on June 19th, Juneteenth, Father's Day weekend. Uh, where we're, it's going to be a, a live concert featuring uh, groups like FFC, PID, Dynamic Twins, Stephen Wiley, Michael Peace, Chili Baby from Gospel Gangsters and DOC. And a lot of these guys, you know, like PID, they're bringing all the all the original guys together, you know, DOC. They're bringing all these original guys together, you know, flying in for this event. Uh, and, and so it's going to be about an hour or so long concert, even before we show the film, because we want people to see you could you're going to hear them talk in the film. Yeah. You're going to see what's happening. But we want you to experience what they were doing, you know, uh, at, at the ground, at the grassroots at the beginning of this. So it opens up just 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 live in a performance uh, with them ministering, having an opportunity to do that. And then that's going to, you know, that's going to go right into the premiere of the screening of the film. And so it's we call it the mic drop experience. So it's a, the mic yes. drop experience weekend. So you get to experience what we're talking about in the film in person. You know, and so that's June nineteenth in Dallas, Texas, Granada Theater, where it's considered the the mecca of Christian hip hop. It's like Dallas, and so wow. a lot of people are coming in. You know, Rapzilla is flying in from New York. Uh, we we got Holy Culture wow. flying in from Philadelphia. Uh, MC Nice from uh, uh, God's uh, God's uh, Hip Hop House, or I believe it's GH Three Radio. They're mm -hmm. they're coming in. Sketch the journalist is coming in from Houston. A lot of press. Uh, individuals are coming wow. in for this event because this is historic has never happened yes. you know yes. none uh, all these guys have never performed on the stage at the same time in a concert wow. environment they've always they've been on like a uh, uh, right. festival so you come into the festival but this was an event that just focused on them this is the mm -hmm. first time and so that's why you know uh, Johnny Williams is coming in from from Chicago from for ETW mm -hmm. and uh you know and so it's you know you know, when we when we said let's do it, we weren't thinking about how much of an impact it was until like, oh, we're in the right in the midst of this. And so we're we're just encouraging people in the Dallas area, Fort Worth, Oklahoma, wherever you are, really, 
you know, if you want to attend this event, you know, you can go to www.themovie.com, you know, pick a, click on the mic drop experience. They'll take you, yes. you know, to how you can purchase your tickets and be there and, and don't miss this event. So we're very excited. We, we're less than three weeks away and we're very excited for, for what we're, God is about to do. Well, Darius, I just want to say shout out to you. How, you know, my hat off, you know, just, I'm just really speechless. I'm trying to get my words together. <laughs> I know the journey of this music and to understand what you have done is man amazing wow. let me let me do one shift gear i mean uh what is it when you shift gears yeah yeah shift gear. <laughs> before we wrap up i just want to kind of touch on your filmmaking journey and what you hope to create as you continue to expand your uh your um film your your film contribution to the world yeah yeah, uh, it's always been my heart, you know, uh, to, I feel like I'm a really good storyteller. Um, and I have, you know, at least 15 scripts that I've written of movies. Uh, you know, we're, we're also in pre-production and development for a docu-series that highlights the women in Christian hip hop. We're in the second phase of that, uh, going through our interview process with those, those women, powerful interviews. Uh, so we're working on that as well. Uh, we have, uh, you know, a documentary that we're working, you know, working with Mookie uh, Mike with. Uh, it's a Paul Pierce documentary we're looking to release next year sometime. Uh, so it's going to be uh, content from documentaries, docuseries, and actually full-blown films that yes. we're looking to just knock out over the next, you know, <laughs> years, you know. And mm -hmm. so we're always looking ahead, but just really be able to uh, educate people edutainment in the sense of whether it's a film or a documentary or or just content that people can say man that changed my life or that impact my life and and that's what we're desiring wow. to do with black lava films air garden entertainment and uh and so it's exciting my drop is, is is the beginning is i believe it's, it's the exciting. open door that's going to create other open doors and opportunities for what god has for us to do but darius okay so at the end of your life, you look back over it. What would be the summation of all things? <laughs> That's a legacy that I've I've uh, built something for my children to to build on. And that's that's for me is why I wake up every morning, because I think of those three little girls and say, OK, what do I need to do to make sure that their life is has a great foundation to build on? And they're not started from scratch. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Legacy. Yes. Well, you have definitely um, done an amazing job using your gifts, your talents, your heart. Yes. You didn't get into the fact that you are a full-blown minister. <laughs> <laughs> For real, right? <laughs> yeah. There's a lot to him, you all. But you have an opportunity to learn more about Darius West. Go to Mike Drop the Movie. You can also find him on social media. Um, be sure to support all that he's doing. And if you are a part of the uh, music industry, particularly uh, holy hip hop, gospel rap, <laughs> all yeah. the different ways that we say it, Christian hip hop, you want to support this movie. And it is such a great honor to share today with you. Thank you. Man, thank you so much, Christy. <laughs> all right. Any last words before we go? No, man. Uh, well, get, get your tickets. June 19th, uh, you know, Juneteenth, we actually have some special made uh, shirts uh, just for the event that deals with, uh, you know, Juneteenth, you know, uh, the history of that and, and my drop because we're dealing with history. So we actually have a special edition T-shirt for those who are attending. They can only get it at this event that honors and, and uh, celebrates Juneteenth as well as my drop. So uh, so right. go to the website and get your tickets and see you there. All right, this is a great kickoff to Black Music Month, and we're going to be celebrating Black music in Dallas. Hey, hey, hey. Juneteenth weekend. I yes. love it. Thank you all for checking out the Crazy Taylor Show. Be sure to, once again, yes, yeah, celebrate all that Darius West is doing. Go to MikeDropTheMovie.com. Follow on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and we will see you all soon. See you soon.